and with Robert Height. Um, Robert, two fantastic wins out of three attempts over the last uh, three weeks. Talk about what those two wins mean to you. Well, it just it turned our season around. It gives you confidence. I mean, I went since 2016 in Gainesville without a win, without even a final round berth. Uh, finally got to the final this year at Houston. We lost. Came to the Norwalk race, got to the final, lost. And if you go back the last nine, ten races, the worst we've qualified is third. So it's not like we don't have performance, okay? We're, we're lacking consistency on race day, and we're beating ourselves, okay? Okay. None of those races had we ever gone out there and just got outrun. We dropped cylinders, we smoked the tires, and both of those are beating yourself, okay? Because they could have been avoided by us. Right. And so, you know, we won Denver, go into Sonoma, you know, make that monster run Friday night, you know, 339.87 miles an hour and qualified number one and Jimmy Proc, uh, low ET first round, smoked the tire second round. He left Sonoma on a mission. He was so mad and we are not going to do that again. Roll into Seattle, we were, he set it up soft, first qualifying run, ended up being number two for that round. The next seven runs, we were the quick car every session, every single run, we were quick of, of the field. And we have consistency, we've got our performance, and leaving there, Jimmy says, there's more left in this thing. We can run harder, but uh, we didn't need to, and we're gonna, we're gonna race smarter. So, um, tell you what, you go in the, you roll up the starting line with a car like this, uh, you have a lot of confidence. You're not scared to death um, that you've got to pull a rabbit out of a hat and do something that, you know, is unhuman-like as a driver, cut some killer light just to win. No. Go up there, stand on the gas at the right time, and drive this thing down the middle of the lane, and you're you're probably going to win. It is that that easy right now, and it's having, we're having a lot of fun. We're, we're was there a depression in you at all? Well, you I, headed I'm not, to I'm Denver. The, I'm not the type of guy that blames somebody else. Okay. Okay. Even when the car's not running good, I look at well, am I causing this? You know, you got. I don't point fingers. You know, okay. I'm a I'm a component of this as well. Yeah. And you know, and then there's a big factor here called luck. Okay. All right. Our, our opponents have had a lot of luck this year. Okay. Okay. A lot. Okay. And then we get zero and you start wondering, you know, what am I doing wrong? What, you know, and you just start second guessing it, uh -huh. you know, but you just have to, you still have to believe in your people. And what kept me going is our qualifying. Okay. Running good and qualifying, you know, we can run good. Okay. We just got to put it together on race day. So I'm not saying by any means we have it totally figured out, but I will say that we're hitting our stride at the perfect time of year. Okay, you said the word luck. How do you to determine what is luck and what is just plain doing it right? Well, I mean, I would rather win a race by doing it right, okay? okay. And that's not making any mistakes, car being quicker than everybody, and the driver leaving first every time. Now that is doing it right, okay? Yeah. But you need some breaks along the way, okay? Yeah. You need your competition to screw up. You need, you know, that's kind of what you need, the competition to screw up. And we don't get that. So when we drop a cylinder or smoke the tires, the car next to me is going down the, the track and then they get the win. So we still beat ourselves. I don't feel on a situation like that that we got outran. We beat ourselves, and we okay. can't do that. So, you know, with this countdown format, like I said a minute ago, we are hitting our stride at the perfect time. The other thing, inquiry-wise, Denver's a mile up in the air. I don't believe that Pacific Raceway is a mile up in the air. They're totally different yeah, so a Sonoma, eleva we ran elevations. Right. 380 at uh, 339 miles, miles an, hour. an hour. So that is another thing, you know. 
that gives you confidence right now, okay? We can run good when it's hot. We can run good when it's cool. We can run good at high altitude. We can run good at sea level. Good air, bad air. Um, we've got it going on. And Jimmy Proc, Chris Cunningham, these guys, they really have a handle on this thing. It should have ran 89 or 90 tonight. Okay. Pan pressure switch shut it off because a piston uh, collapsed. Okay? okay. Okay. And it were trying some different pistons. Okay. And obviously they're not very good. <laughs> but that it, sh it was going to run 89 or 90 right there, and it only ran 93 at 288 miles an hour. So it's uh, coming in here, you know, a different prepared racetrack than our national events, going right down the track. And that shows these guys really know what this thing is capable of and what they're dealing with. That leads me slightly down a different angle, too. This is a performance for the fans to, to let them in an even better way reach out, touch you, feel like they're part of you. But at the same time, this is a test session, right? Oh, without a doubt. <clears throat> you know, we wouldn't we wouldn't race cars if we weren't competitive and want to win. Yeah. And yes, Bill Bader puts on a show unlike any other, okay? This what pe the fans are gonna witness tonight is is the coolest drag race in the world. Okay, not just drag racing. There's so many other things: um, gassers, jet cars, nostalgia cars, fireworks show, uh, light show. It is action-packed, and so yes, it, this is all about entertaining the fans. It's cool to hang out with these fans and let them see what we do, put on a show for them. But at the end of the day, end of the night. Mm -hmm. You want to walk away with that Norwalk trophy, okay? That's a shape like a dragster Dragon. and it's curved. And okay, you just beat because there's some good cars here. You just beat yeah. these guys, okay? Yeah. And they know you beat them. And our next race at Brainerd, they're gonna remember you beat them, and they're gonna push them harder. Uh, we got to just keep winning, okay? And that 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 buys you, like what we were talking about a little bit ago, mm -hmm. some brakes. Because now these guys, when they race you, they're going to have to start pushing it, okay? And they're going to start smoking the tires. Is, okay, is that the hardest thing to do, is to not over-push yourself as a team, as a driver? Yes. And Jimmy Proc, um, he wants to be low ET, okay? He, he, that's what he lives for, okay? Okay. And Jimmy Proc, will make a run and he'll come back and pick it apart, okay? There are no perfect runs in Jimmy Proc's mind, okay? okay? You can run the fastest, you can run the quickest, and Jimmy Proc will figure out where it could have ran a little quicker, a little faster, and that's what makes him so good. He is constantly refining and picking it apart and trying to get better every day. Okay, so final question then. You talk about for Jimmy Proc that every not every run is not a perfect run. Have you ever had what you felt was a perfect run? No, because Frank Hawley taught me that there are no perfect runs. Okay. Okay, and I think if you start getting complacent and thinking, well, I got this made, this is easy, and yeah, that was that was perfect. Well, you're not gonna ever get any better. Okay. There is something, I come back and I look at uh, the video every run, and I will say, okay, I got it. I got a little left, I got a little right, okay? I can do better, and you just have to constantly think that way, and that's the name of this game, okay? Yep. And that's how you get records, and you win races, and improve, just constantly working and getting better. Robert, I wish you the best of luck, and I thank you for your time. Thank you.